What book would you recommend to people who haven't finished a book since high school? The Martian. The book had me laughing out loud. My son did not know how a book about a man alone struggling for survival on Mars could be funny but it is. I gave that book, along with Old Man's War, to my primary care physician for Christmas last year. He said his 12 year daughter immediately snatched out of his hands. Colon. Close bracket. Jurassic Park. I know reading books after seeing the movies can sometimes be dull. But the book is worry darker than the movie. Muldoon driving around drunk as FCK on whiskey. Swearing like a sailor and blowing up dinos with a rocket launcher for example. Where was the swearing? Literally finished reading it the other day. And aside from Tim going oh shit oh shit oh shit. I was surprised how there was zero profanity in the book. Unless there's an uncensored version. But aside from that. God damn. The book was fantastic. Was surprised how much of a massive DCK Hammond was. Any book by John Ronson. He's a journalist who dives into cults. Psychopaths. Politics and other interesting stuff. Really accessible writing style. His writing style is interesting. He doesn't tell you what to think. He basically describes his investigative journey and his thoughts along the way. It's non-fiction that feels almost like fiction. World War Z. Lots of short stories that tie into the greater story. I illegally downloaded it when I was really poor and liked it so much I brought it out of appreciation. Edit. Greater. Second edit. Not correcting spelling. Whatever I do what I want. Close bracket. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I hadn't read a book purely for pleasure in years. This August. I saw it on a bookshelf at my parents home. Once I started. I couldn't put it down. Literally. I opened that book at 10am. Finished it at 8pm the same day. Please go read it. Edit. Oh. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how much traction this comment got. Thank you all for the awards, upvotes, and replies. It's wonderfully magical to see the power that books have in connecting and inspiring us. Colon. Close bracket. For viewers of the movie, the book is significantly different and Howl is a terrible person. If you think he's a whiny cribbaby in the movie, just wait until you find out what kind of whiny hit it and quit it cribbaby asshole he is in the book. The movie toned him down. The Princess Bride. It's a delightful read. It's easy. And everyone I know that has read it has absolutely loved it. I've recommended it to several friends. Including like 8 people in a work book club. And again. 100 stroke 100 across the board. Edit. I love that so many people agree. Thanks for the awards. It's a wonderful book and a wonderful movie. Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. Premise. What if superheroes were the bad guys? It's yeah without being shallow. First chapter that hooks you. Long enough to take a while but not intimidating. I recently picked up reading as a quarantine hobby after not reading a book for fun since probably middle school. I realized quickly that the reason I always thought I hated reading was because other people were telling me what to read. And it was usually subjects that didn't interest me at all. I thought about which non-book things I enjoy reading. And realized I have an easy time getting completely engrossed in Wikipedia articles. Ascredic threads and blog posts about unresolved mysteries. Paranormal events. Survival and nature stories. So I bought a few books that fit into those common themes and it's been great. This probably isn't a lot for some people. But since March I've finished 5 books, up from 0 for the 10-15 years prior. I think if you think about it like this, you'll have a much easier time finding a book for yourself by just looking up bestsellers in the categories that you decide interest you. In case you're also interested in my themes, I've read and loved Into the Wild, Dead Mountain, The Untold True Story of the Dyatlov Pass Incident 438 Days, An Extraordinary True Story of Survival at Sea, The Road, Between a Rock and a Hard Place. Hope this is helpful to somebody. The Color of Magic. Discworld has got me back into reading again. 
I might caution new readers to start with something else than Color of Magic, while it's great. It's also before he really gets the groove of things. And quite a few people are put off by the whole series for that reason. In my opinion something like Guards Guards make a great starting point. Good Omens. It's short and funny. Interview with a Vampire. Star Wars. Heir to the Empire. That's on contributions to the Star Wars saga. Starting with Heir to the Empire are a great gateway into both Star Wars EU if you're a Star Wars fan. And also Tsan if you're into Sifi in general. His Conqueror trilogy is great. The Icarus hunt is very well put together if a bit cheesy in places. I felt Angelmus was a bit too much work for its concept but still worth a read. Slaughterhouse 5. It's engaging. Profound and quite short. I rarely read books twice. But I've read it and catch her in the right three times. As far as Vonnegut goes. Cat's Cradle might be an easier entry point. Slaughterhouse 5 is the one everyone knows. But it can sometimes be hard to follow. Also. The amount of whimsy in Cat's Cradle makes for a lighter read. For a good middle ground. I'd go with the Sirens of Titan. I love everything I've read by Vonnegut. But not all of it is easily accessible. This is just filled with people listing their personal favorite lol. Terry Pratchett Reaper Man. The Hobbit. It is a quick read and keeps you engaged the whole time. I know some say it is a kid's book but I honestly think it is great at all ages. It's my favorite book of all time. I've always disliked the separation between adult and kids media. As if something made for children becomes devoid of merit if you experience it as an adult. The Hobbit is a work of literary art regardless of who the target audience is. I've always loved this C.S. Lewis quote on the matter. To be concerned about being grown up. To admire the grown up because it is grown up. To blush at the suspicion of being childish. These things are the marks of childhood and adolescence. And in childhood and adolescence they are. In moderation. Healthy symptoms. Young things ought to want to grow. But to carry on into middle life or even into early manhood this concern about being adult is a mark of really arrested development. When I was 10. I read fairy tales in secret and would have been ashamed if I had been found doing so. Now that I am 50 I read them openly. When I became a man I put away childish things. Including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. Double quote. The Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. Especially if you're into Greek mythology. This is so true. Read these in middle school. Started out with a. I'll try it. First book of the first series took a while to get into. But eventually finished it and went to the second with the attitude of sure I guess. Then read the third. Then the fourth. Then the fifth. Then I moved on and completed the second series, some 2000 plus pages in total, in a week. Start to finish. Coming from someone who hates reading books for fun. Born a crime. It's a really easy read. And it's really funny and enlightening to a completely different culture and way of life. The Giver by Lois Lowry. It is my all time favorite. It isn't very long. But the story is amazing and was one of the first special team changes utopian dystopia society by being special. It's absolutely amazing. I completely agree. I am an avid reader with shelves upon shelves of books in my room and I credit it all to reading The Giver in middle school. I didn't realize a book could move me in such a way. Have you read the Unwind Trilogy? There may actually be four now, by Neil Schusterman. It's a young adult dystopian novel but in no way similar to The Giver plot-wise. I find, though, that many people who love The Giver tend to really enjoy at least the first book. Unwind. The original Millennium Trilogy books by Stieg Larsson. Especially the first book The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. It's definitely more grown up than high school material. It's at its core a great thriller mystery novel which is rewarding but not difficult to read. The characters are very memorable. The story is well crafted. And the themes are very relevant both then and now. I'll add a caveat that the depictions of sexual violence and abuse in the book might be triggering for some. So people may want to consider that before starting. Ready Player One. 
It has a good first chapter that hooked me. It's not a super tough read either and the story is great. This book is actually really not good. And it was hard for me to get through the book and the movie because of the cringe inducing and fan servicing parts of the book. I understand how it got popular I guess. Especially after the movie came out, which had similar problems but to a lesser degree. But I cannot personally finish that book due the sheer amount of the lack of any kind of reasonable world building or unique character development. I guess if the author was going for a generic 80s story arc to fit with the theme of one generic 80s reference every paragraph. He succeeded. To an agonizing degree. There's a great podcast by the guys who do riff tracks and MST3K called 372 pages we'll never get back where they break it down by chapters every week. They've moved on to other books that are also worth checking out. To add context so it doesn't seem like bitching. This was one of the first books I tried to read after high school because I found myself in the same trap as OP. And I decided to pick this up because it was on the Commandant's reading list. The Dark Tower. The Gunslinger. It got me hooked on Phonex again. That is a heavy. Long book that would be like giving a steak dinner to a baby. I would not recommend a king book to anyone who hasn't finished a book since high school. Keep it simple. Under 250 pages. And with a 5 7th grade vocabulary to bring new readers into the hobby. That's coming from a huge king fan with most of his works on my bookshelf right now. Depends on what interests the reader. The stuff they make you read in high school is often picked because it's classic, which isn't a bad thing. But if someone didn't keep reading after high school, then classics are probably not their thing. But my go-to recommendations for books are... 1Q84 Hiroki Murakami, also really like Kafka on the Shore by him. Murakami has this amazing way of telling really weird stories. 1Q84 is a huge book. But I read it in two days because I just couldn't stop reading it. 1984 or well. Okay so this is a classic but with good reason. It's a well written book that is constantly relevant. Cathedral by the Sea, Il Defonso Falcones. I honestly didn't think I'd like this book. But it's an amazing story that just kept me up at night promising just one more chapter. Double quote. The 100 year old man who climbed out a window and disappeared, Jonas Jonasson. I laughed aloud reading this book. I didn't think a story about a 100 year old dude would be that interesting. But I really like the comical historical revisionism of this book. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste NG and Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson are both very page turner why quick reads that don't have any of the triteness you might expect from something called a page turner. I'm not sure I'd put either on an all time list or anything. But they both pack serious, and very different, punches. I don't know if I've ever had a reading experience quite like the one I had with Monday's Not Coming. Catch 22 is one of the most engaging funny and heartbreaking books I've read. I really like how each chapter is mostly self-contained so it felt like each story was a chapter from a comic book. Currently rereading. I wouldn't suggest it as a book to get back into reading if you haven't read anything since high school. Mainly because of the non-conventional structure. Long paragraphs and large cast of characters which can be hard to track. Especially if you're not familiar with military jargon rankings. I say this. And it was my fav book for a decade. Seconding all the recommendations for a bunch of books and adding my own. The Martian. Really just great if you have any interest in science fiction. Ready Player One. If you were a 80s or 90s nerd gamer. Dune. Good sci-fi. Immersive world. You'll be in on it for the new Vilan Weather movie. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. The main trilogy really pays off is justice porn and I thought super worth it. Of Mice and Men. Steinbeck is great. This book is short and if it doesn't make you feel something, you won't have to waste your time with other books. Harry Potter. It was super popular for a reason even among adults. But you'll be in for 7 books. Gone Girl. It's not as girl focused as you might think. And it is horrifying. Shogun. It's a big book. But it was so immersive. The Stranger by Albert Camus. Super short read but it's very interesting and philosophical. 
It's written in very plain language so it should be easy to get through if you haven't read a book in a long time. I don't want to spoil anything about this one just go in blind and thank me later. The Book Thief. This is one that I think everyone should read. It's a story about Nisi Germany from the perspective of death. Absolutely incredible from start to finish and it's written pretty simply so you won't have a hard time understanding the vocabulary. Shutter Island. This is one of my favorites in the mystery thriller genre. Absolute F King page turner especially if you've never seen the movie, which is also great. This is another one I'd rather not spoil just go in blind. Dune. It's not specific for your situation but it is the best book series ever. Dune is strong by itself. It doesn't require you to read more. But more is there if you're inclined to dive deeper. Great series for sure. I wouldn't bother with the stuff after Frank Herbert's death though. It's not as good. Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I'm not a native English speaker. And yet I enjoyed it a lot. It is written in brief chapters that allow you to read a few pages or a lot at a time. I think the characters are well developed and the story well planned for such a short book. It's not super short. But it's not 600 pages. And the story is really entertaining. And as usual the book is much better than the movie. There were some words that I didn't knew but sure it won't be a problem for you. Perfume. The story of a murderer. Fantastic book and the film's pretty good too. Featuring the late. Great Alan Rickman. Just remember to not beat yourself up. Some of the writing is French names and places so the pronunciation may be a little difficult if you don't know how their alphabet works. Young adult novels. You are not too old to read a book with a teenage protagonist. Yeah novels tend to be shorter and easier to digest. Making them perfect for someone who's jumping back into reading after a long break. Intensity by Dean Koontz. The first chapter compels you to read the second. The second the third and so on and so on. It's the first book I read 12 years after high school. Soon after I read The Stand Unabridged. The Road by Cormac McCarthy it's not too long and it reads very easily. There's no chapters so you can just stop wherever. It may read very easily but that book is not easy to read. Read it in a single sitting. Couldn't sleep after. I wasn't distressed. I just felt numb. I had the feels smashed out if me by that one. The Kite Runner as I read it in one night. Laughed. Cried. Learned a lot about history. And made everyone in my family read, and subsequently love, it. For context. My dad picks up a book every 10 years. Mom is an avid reader. And sister is a sophomore in HS who would rather play Minecraft. There's also another book by the same author, A Thousand Splendid Sons. If you love it and want to read more. I've been able to engage in many conversations with professors. Veterans. Friends. Etc. As a result of Kite Runner. Game of Thrones. Not necessarily the best books but they are very good. And if someone has seen the TV show they'll probably have an interest. Plus once they read it. It'll be like holy cow. Books are so much better than TV. The Chocolate War. I read it in high school and loved it. Long story short. On the surface it's about selling chocolate bars. But deeper down it's about intimidation and oppression within a Catholic high school. It actually made the American Library Association's list for top 100 banned challenged books in 2000 to 2009. Fight Club. I'm usually terrible at focusing. But it kept me engaged throughout. It's a short read too. So it doesn't feel overwhelming. And. In case you don't know. The plot is quite captivating as well. Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi. It's the true crime story of the Manson family murders from the late 60s as well as the intriguing history of the infamous Charles Manson. It's one of my favorite books and I highly recommend it to everyone. Want vacuous adventure fun? Try anything from the Oregon Files series by Clive Cussler. Want a big brain but brutally funny satire of war? Slaughterhouse 5 and Catch 22. Want a sob? A man called Dave. Want to feel like you are smart? Ender's Game, 
If you have already read it. Read Ender's Shadow. Want to feel like you are dumb? The Foundation Trilogy and Dune are both great. And reading Dune before it comes out to a streaming service near you is probably a good idea. Want to read something that will make you fundamentally a sad and cynical person, especially if you are American? Just Mercy and the new Jim Crow are both great looks at the American criminal justice system. Good luck. Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut is a great read. It's a short book with short chapters. Perfect for today's attention spans. And the story of political ineptitude and global calamity absolutely has a 2020 flavor to it. At the Earth's Core by Edgar Rice Burroughs. It's an exciting, fast-paced story that was very enjoyable for me. Bonus for there being multiple books in the series if you want more. Maybe get a book that's actually a collection of short stories. This way you get to read a lot of great stories without having to invest in too much time to finish a story. Some great ones. Stories of Your Life and Others by Te Chang Exhalation. Stories by Te Chang The Paper Menagerie and other stories by Ken Liu.